<laughs> heat more? More like heat less, am I right? Hi, I'm Umbreon Libris, and I promised that joke to one of my patrons. Today we're redesigning Heat More. It's the first redesign selected from your suggestions, so head down into the comments and let me know which redesign you want to see next. Let's start by talking about what we want to change about Heatmore's design. To me, it's a pretty average Pokemon overall. It doesn't really stand out in a bad way, but it certainly doesn't stand out in a good way either. And I think part of that is that there isn't really anything that ties the design together really well, neither in the concept nor just visually. Heatmore is based on an anteater, but as far as I can tell, it's not a specific anteater. And it has elements of, I don't know, a heating system, I guess? It has these vents on the arms, these pipes on the belly and the back, and its tail is an exhaust pipe. It's supposed to be bringing in air through the vents and the tail and heating it up inside of itself, but all of these elements are just kind of awkwardly on there. They're not very well integrated with the more animalistic parts. And the stripes may be a reference to lava on a volcano, but that's not something that comes through very well. So I basically just want to adjust to the things that aren't quite working, and the big change will be to make it specifically based on the giant anteater. The giant anteater is a South American species known for its big bushy tail and the iconic pattern that goes from the chest down the sides. You say anteater to me, this is what I'm picturing. I started off with silhouettes just to figure out the posture and some basic design elements. I wanted it to be able to be both bipedal and quadrupedal. At Jagerfmir's suggestion, I wanted the tail to be flame-shaped, and I figured the chest pattern could join up with the tail. Ya boy Wispy suggested the tail be literal flames instead, which did look good, but ultimately we decided to keep the furry tail. I wanted a pretty active pose, and since I was pretty happy with the first one I tried, I jumped right into adjusting the proportions. By the way, the tongue will definitely be a proper tongue. It'll just be covered in flames as opposed to made of flames. It took a lot of incremental adjustments to finally get the proportions to a point that I felt looked natural. And even after I started sketching the actual body shapes, it still took a ton of adjustments for it to look just right. The grates on the arms came from a suggestion by Kyle O'Connell that we do something with the dark spots that giant anteaters have on their front paws. The grates basically replace Heatmore's weird wrist vents. To break up the monotony of the face, we played around with a few different eye designs and as suggested by Tiny Fireball, we put a pattern on the tip of the snout that would be darker, looking either muddy or burnt. We also tried some eyebrows, and when Sea Dragon Gamer said that they should be bushy, everyone was skeptical, but it ended up working out really well. We also added an extra grate to the legs, also to make it less plain looking. Alright, I think it's time to put some final line work in place, and then we can get to figuring out the colors.
Naturally, we started with OG Heat Morphs colors, and we didn't end up straying too far from that. The tail and chest pattern were the biggest challenge. Originally, I was thinking they should be glowy so that it would represent that internal combustion that Heat Morphs is supposed to have going on, even though it was all still meant to be fur. But the lava lamp esque pattern just wasn't looking quite right. The next idea came from Alexis Valdez to use the stripes from the original design as part of the fur pattern. I thought that was a great idea, but even after trying a lot of different variations, I just could not get to something that I thought looked good. But having decided the pattern would just be plain fur, I decided to adjust the lines to flatten out the pattern. Eventually, I decided I would make the flame pattern really simple, with red on top and yellow on the bottom. And that was what finally made it look, to me, like both a furry tail and flames, so that was the winner. Just before we moved on to shading, Creepy Truck Driver pointed out just a couple of tufts of fur on the back would help make the transition from the chest pattern to the shaggy tail. Then, Gano Hasanbegovic requested the inner ear have a different color, which did look much better. Shading the tail to really sell that it isn't actual fire was a bit tricky, but when I put the highlights on, I was finally happy with it. And there we go, the finished heat more design. I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out, but I always seem to suffer from the artist's curse of never thinking that it's quite good enough. But anyway, let me know if you enjoyed it, or what you would have done differently. And as you may have noticed, this video is in a different format than usual, so let me know if you enjoyed that as well. The next redesign will be recorded on August 29th. I hope that you will be able to join us live, and I'll try to remember to announce which Pokemon we're going to redesign about a week ahead of time. I know I forgot this time, and I'm sorry about that. Thank you for watching. And thank you also to my patrons, including luxury patron Ethan Saffron, who provided that quality joke at the beginning. But today, an extra special thank you goes to Maggie Murray, who is this month's newest patron. I'm Umbrian Libris. I'll see you in the next chapter. But today, an extra special thank you goes to Shut Up, Saucepan! <laughs>